Hi, my name is Megan Clifford. I'm currently a junior or in 11th grade at Seaham High School, and I'm going to be reading one of my favorite books, Edward Fudwalper Fibbed Big, explained by Fanny Fudwalper, and that's by Berkeley Breathed. Okay, let's get into it. From a long line of liars, there's none higher upper than my fibbing big brother, Edward Fudwalper. There he is now. I just know what he's doing. He's thinking of who could be next for some fooling. Edward's been cooking up fibs full of fooey. He'll serve them up sweet, all gooey with hooey. Last week he fibbed big and told Mabel Dill, I read you've been voted the queen of Brazil. They want you to come. Bikinis, bring ten. I think Mabel went. No one's seen her since then. Yes, he thought them up, them up long, he thought them up tall, but he, did he think much of me? No, not much, not at all. Like the time he fibbed big and told Ben and Dinky that I'd been born by a poodle named Stinky. That wasn't so nice, but that fib I'd forgive. If only he'd liked me or noticed I live. Early this morning, he did it again. He whacked a baseball and things smashed in the den. Dad rushed on over and found Mom's cracked pig. Then Edward Fudwepper fibbed way, way too big. It's truly, clearly quite simple, you know. The whole thing was done from two pigs from Pluto. They were cruising by Earth, looking down from above when they spotted mom's pig and fell deeply in love. So they dropped one pig here. He could just not resist. The passionate porker insisted a kiss. But he leaned in too far and mom's pig hit the ground. One on Pluto, you see, they kiss sitting down. Then he left brokenhearted upset and unseen, and his ship pe picked him up with a pig lifting beam. And that's all, that's the truth, said Ed the fib slinger. In a whole fib history, a whooping humdinger. Then a yelp and a howl and a scream from nearby. Loma May Loon had been listening outside. Mabel Dill, she cried loudly, has been missing for days. She just must have been grabbed by those pig-lifting rays. She got to a phone and screamed loud and shrill. Space monster piggies have met nabbed Mabel Dill. They're coming for me. They're coming for you. Send the army, the air force, and the dog catcher too. And that's just what they did. They came for space pigs with planes and tanks, with loud whirly gigs. Oh, it was dreadful, a real world stopper, all from Edward Fudwopper, fat, Fudwopper's fat whopper. They pointed their loudspeaker dishes to space, and those generals roared till red in the face. Now listen out there, we'll shoot you, yes we will. Come back here at once and bring Mabel Dill. Edward watched all of this for quite a long time, but people were staring at something behind. Oh, rats, Edward thought, how much more could there be? A face filled the sky from the hills to the sea. It did not look happy, nor pleasant, nor soft. In fact, that big thing looked somewhat ticked off. It was purple and green with one eye on its snout. It's open, it opened its mouth, roaring, Who started this hoot? I live quite close by, just two galaxies down, and I just cannot sleep with the fuss and the sound. I know nothing of pigs, nor a lost Mabel Dill, so someone's been fibbing with slippery skill. Who is this gnat? Point out where he's at. Show me to him, and I'll swat him down flat. 
And that's what they did, each dad and each mother. They pointed right up at my shaking big brother. Edward dropped low. He was scared ten times double. He'd fibbed way too big, and now he was in huge trouble. Then wait, what's that sound? A voice, small and fine? Everyone stopped. Whose was it? It was mine. Oh, please, I called out. It's my fault, don't you see? I broke that blue pig. Edward's fib was for me. So, dear grumpy thing, with three eyes in your head, see that it's me you should swat down instead. What could I do? Edward faced a big mess. I told the fat fib, yes, I learned from the best. I thought I'd be smooshed. Smash, squash right on down. But that big face looked in with a smile, not a frown. I think, he said firmly, you're both big fibsters. But out where I live, we're not loved by our sisters. Mine, by the way, I have left all alone. And now I'll go back to her sleeping at home. He looked at me odd, kind of sad, kind of blue. It sure would be nice to have one like you. Then he turned round his ship, and back home he drove her, and I turned to find Edward looking me over. He said not a thing as we walked back to Dad, where there he looked up and confessed, I've been bad. So we taped and glued, and we fixed up Mom's pig, and we took told Mom the truth, that we'd fibbed, and fibbed big. Our folks hugged us both and collected no fines. But we sat in time out to pay for our crimes. Then Ed looked at me with a smile that was new and said, it is nice to have one like you. Two former fibsters that Edward and me, but brother and sister, we finally be. And if somebody knows where Mabel Dill went, please tell her from Edward, no harm was meant. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that.